Okay, so this is how I pack up um, the Garmin Echo Maps and LiveScope. Everything fits into this bag. Um, I've actually made a few adjustments, so now everything closes pretty quick. Uh, the main reason is this screen has to be perfectly angled. I'll show you that when I open it up. So uh, here's five feet of cable going to the LiveScope transducer. I just use a fly reel bag to protect the transducer. So we can take this out since we're gonna mount. So I have the transducer on this. This is a Summit perspective mount. Uh, they're actually pretty good. It has a one inch diameter connection here. That's going to the aluminum pole that I have. What I like about it is you can just take it off and put it on pretty quick. And that's one of the reasons why I got it. Uh, I just clipped onto the handle here just so it doesn't fall off. And I'll just take that clip off. So everything comes off pretty easily. Um, and then I'll just put that to the side. So let's open them up. So there we go. Um, on the bottom here, this is where I keep the transducer, the GT52. It fits in there pretty well. And I have uh, some PVC pipe here that I I molded onto the transom mount for the transducer. So what I did was I just took a piece of PVC, put some holes in it to mount. I used a heat gun to bend this thing. So I can bend it into like a straight, um, gave it like a straight surface so we can screw the transducer on. And it works pretty good. And one thing you notice that uh, the GT52 and I'm thinking all fishing, all transducer mounts, they have an adjustable angle there. So whatever angle you put on doesn't matter too much just because you can correct it with that attachment. And that's basically it. So here's my transom mount. This one here, you can see it's labeled. This one here actually rotates around. So you can change the direction of the live scope transducer. This one to the left here, that one's for the GT52, not just the regular transducer for the echo maps. So you can see it's just basically mounted on a cutting board has these steel brackets here where the one inch PVC tube comes in. I have a little knob at the top here to change directions. I have uh, just uh, quick labels for perspective mode, forward and down mode, that's for the live scope. And inside here I have a, a one inch aluminum tube that's one inch outer diameter. And over here just quick releases so I can put the transducers on and take them off. This is the live scope mount. I just put it in. Just put it in like that. Put this knob on. And then I can close it up. And there it is. And it's free to move around. And let's do the other mount. So here's the other uh, transducer. So let's put this guy on. I also have some strings here, which you can see, just to make sure I don't lose these, because I lose a ton of these. And that's basically it. So uh, when I'm moving like this, we don't ever hit. So the transducers are pretty far apart. You can see one is offset a little bit, just to make sure that when I'm in perspective mode, I'm not gonna hit anything. They're free to move. There may be some cavitation because they are kind of close together, but if to avoid that, well, you just have to move it to the other side while you're actually moving. But if you're staying still, there shouldn't be any cavitation at all. And going back into forward mode. All right, let's throw this on. <clears throat> and it fits in there really snug, which is pretty good. So I just have the fish finder sitting there. It is pretty big. The boat, I think, is around 12 feet. And the cable is right into the back there. Here's a view of how it looks like from inside the boat. So when operating this thing, I just have to turn this handle here, the one with all the labels on it. So this is forward, down, 
If I go to perspective, change it there. Those are just resets, basically, just so I know where it is. So this is live scoping. You can see my lure there, or my jig. Every once in a while, a fish will come into the screen and take a look. But one, one, like I haven't caught one yet, so it's it's tough. Oh, there's a fish. Let's take a look. And yeah, it took off. Doesn't really like what I have. So I guess one good thing about uh, live scope is you'll know that the fish are actually coming up to your your hook or whatever, and you know that they reject it. And then at that point, you can actually change out for something else. Um, so that's actually a big plus. Or it could just be a different species altogether, which I am not prepared or not rigged up to go for. Oh, there's a big fish there. Let's bring my lure up to its level and just shake it a bit. Maybe it'll come. No, nope, no, nope, it took off. Okay, so whatever I have is not very interesting. So time to change up the hook. Okay, changed up my lure. And so far I've seen fish come up to it, but again, no one's biting. It could just be my presentation, so... Oh, there's a fish there. Pretty high in the water column. Um, okay, I'm not sure what he's up to, but it looks like he is coming down to my lure. Maybe not. So here is my first fish caught with live scope. It's a pretty big um, lake whitefish. So this is actually pretty cool. I saw it coming on the screen, stayed still, saw it hit, felt a little push on the rod, and just set. So that's an amazing feeling. So live scope really does work. Definitely brought my fishing game up on the lakes for sure. Um, so this is just one. We'll see how it does for the rest of the day. Okay, it looks like I'm probably going to be done here. So in the time that I've been fishing, probably around four and a half hours, I went from 20.3 volts all the way down to 18.2. Something that's the last another five, I mean 3.2 volts before I need to shut it down. So I'm thinking this is good for around eight hours a day. And I was using pretty much pen optics all day, so that's probably on the heaviest load. Um, well, that's kind of it. So. Uh, some things I want to take away from this trip is I just want to update this mount here. I think I'm going to put some uh, bigger steel brackets on here. That should help this thing stay in shape better. Uh, I might want to reduce the drag on this transducer mount for the GT52 because I think this is causing lots of problems. Other than that, the live scope one's working great. I will just reduce the tension around the brackets so this isn't so hard to turn sometimes. Also, I guess my impressions about the live scope. Um, live scope definitely tells you where the fish are, and um, but you will have to do a lot of work yourself in terms of uh, knowing how to fish. Something that I definitely gotta learn how to do. Technology can only take you so far. Uh, but one thing I really did like was I wasn't catching any fish and I was seeing the fish were coming up to my lure. Um, and so when I did change to a different um, a rig, it definitely helped and I did catch a couple fish. So the day a couple fish caught, um, I really didn't have any expectations today. And I guess that's great because I actually used this, um, the technology here and it definitely did help me out. Uh, so I guess until I learn more about this, uh, I think it's a pretty decent product, but the price is pretty steep for it. Uh, but if I learn how to use it better and hold my skills better, maybe it'll be much more effective. Alright guys, thank you.